So in, in this video, I'm going to put together three different uh, parts, two articles, one video that show Trump knew that he lost. I mean, we, we have Fox, uh, Fox News, they call the loss. <laughs> and then uh, Trump went on to raise money. Trump campaign used election lies to raise funds. So let's try here. The Trump campaign knew these claims of voter fraud were false, yet they continued to barrage small dollar donors with emails, encouraging them to donate to something called the Official Election Defense Fund. The Select Committee discovered no such fund existed. I don't believe there is actually a fund called the Election Defense Fund. Is it fair to say the Election Defense Fund was another, I think we called it a marketing tactic? Yes. And tell us about these funds as marketing tactics. Uh, just a topic matter, uh, uh, where money could potentially go to be, how money could potentially be used. The claims that the election was stolen were so successful, President Trump and his allies raised $250 million, nearly $100 million in the first week after the election. On November 9, 2020, President Trump created a separate entity called the Save America PAC. Most of the money raised went to this newly created PAC, not to election-related litigation. The Select Committee discovered that the Save America PAC made millions of dollars of contributions to pro-Trump organizations, including $1 million to Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows' Charitable Foundation, $1 million to the America First Policy Institute, a conservative organization which employs several former Trump administration officials, $204,857 to the Trump Hotel Collection, and over $5 million to Event Strategies, Inc., the company that ran President Trump's January 6 rally on the ellipse. Throughout the committee's investigation, we found evidence that the Trump campaign and its surrogates misled donors as to where their funds would go and what they would be used for. So not only was there the big lie, there was the big ripoff. Donors deserve to know where their funds are really going. They deserve better than what President Trump and his team did. Okay. So here it is here, where Representative Zoe Lofgren disclosed in her closing statement that during the House Select Committee's investigation, we found evidence that the Trump campaign and its surrogates misled voters as to where their funds would go and what they would be used for. So not only was there the big lie, there was the big ripoff. See, the Trump campaign sent millions of emails to supporters. <laughs> I never got one of those. I guess I don't support him. Between election day 2020 and January 6, 2021, the day of the riots, the emails urged donors to give money to fight back and step up in response to the left-wing mob and Democrats undermining the election. In all, former President Trump and his allies raised 250 million dollars off the efforts according to the hill including 100 million in the week after the election you see you see right there it says if you want to financially support donald trump you should do it the old-fashioned way by spending 125 dollars plus shipping on the Ma Alago jewelry set. <laughs> so the old con man with Trump University raised his head again. Let's see? Now, let's see over here. January 6 hearings focus on Fox News call that made Trump's loss clear. And this is Fox, big supporter and a, a media or media or medium that uh, consistently lie and perverts the truth and engages in propaganda you know something straight out of uh, 
Nazi Germany under Dr. Goebbels. Some of Mr. Trump's former aides testify that the Fox call shocked them but also undermined their confidence in his chances of victory. Jason Miller, a senior aide on the Trump campaign, said in video testimony played by the committee that he and others were disappointed with Fox for making the call, but at the same time concerned that maybe our data or our numbers weren't accurate. Mr. Miller has shared none of that concern on election night when he tweeted that Fox was a complete outlier whose call should be ignored by other media. At Mr. Trump's insistence, he and other aides immediately reached out to Fox executives, producers, and on-air talent to demand an explanation. Jerry Kushner, Mr. Trump's son-in-law, went straight to the top, calling Mr. Murdoch. The scene played out in part on the air as Fox talent commented about the complaints raining down on them from the Trump campaign. Anon, we are getting a lot of incoming here and we need you to answer some questions. The network's chief political answer, Brett Baer, said at one point, referring to Anon Mishkin, the person on the decision desk who was responsible for analyzing the data and recommending when Fox issues its call. On Monday, Mr. Stirewall did not describe either Mr. Murdoch or Lachlan Murdoch, the Fox Corporation's executive chairman, as being part of the decision desk process. And network executives have said that Murdoch's were not involved. Though Fox News coverage is typically favorable to conservative, pro-Trump points of view, that deference has never been adopted by the decision desk, which is a separate part of the news gathering operation overseen by Mr. Mishkin, a polling expert who is also a registered Democrat. In the days after the election, Mr. Mishkin was unwavering in his defense of the call as Fox an anchors pressed him once as the host Martha McCollum peppered Mr. Mishkin with a series of what-if scenarios that could bolster Mr. Trump's chances of eking out a victory Mr. Mishkin responded sarcastically, what if frogs had wings? Mr. Mishkin remains a paid consultant for the network, not an employee, and will run the decision desk for the midterm elections in November. The decision desk was created under the former Fox News chairman and founder Roger Ayers, who relished making controversy and drawing ratings more than he cared about towing the line for the Republican Party. Its quick calls angered Republicans on more than one occasion, including in 2012, when it was the first to project that President Barack Obama would win Ohio in the second term, and in 2018, when it declared that Republicans would lose the House of Representatives even as voters were still, <laughs> votes were still being cast on the West Coast. So you see? So once again we see that Trump misled his followers to the tune of 250 million dollars that he used for a Save America PAC.